Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good. You guys are a lively crowd this morning. So I'm Joel, and I'm going to be continuing the series today, Run to the Battle. I hope you guys enjoyed our special guest last week, my dad. My dad spoke last week about, man, that's probably one of the most important things in the Christian walk is learning how to forgive and be unoffendable, no matter... He talks about how people will throw spears at you, and it's how you respond to those spears that merely makes the difference whether you go to the next level. So if you didn't listen to that message, my dad gave it last week, and I've trained him really well. So um, <laughs> everything he knows, he learned from me. I'm just kidding. It's pretty much the reverse. But uh, yeah, a lot of people come afterwards, and they were like, or somebody just came up to me, and she's like, hey, I, you know, I just really love your message. You're like one of my favorite people, but I really liked your dad better than you. I was like, I'll keep that in mind. So... Uh, Yeah. So uh, we're going to continue with this today, talking about the battles that we have to face. You know, for the first week, we talked about the battle we have to face of, of like the battles in front of us. God's given us everything we need to fight the battle in front of us. And a lot of us, we feel inadequate. We don't feel like we have what it takes to fight this battle. But God has already given you some gifts, some talents, some abilities. And he's saying, I want you to use those to the best of your ability. And then I'm going to come in and supernaturally do what you can't do. We're going to be, go beyond your ability as you work as if it depends on you and praise as if it depends on God, because both are true. So we talked about that the first week. Um, last week, we talked about you know, the, the, the fight to keep our heart pure and not become bitter. And today, I want to talk about um, the fight to see the goodness of the Lord. And um, I, the reason I end up playing drums today, I have a personal policy that I don't drum and speak on the same day because it just doesn't usually go very well. Um, I get all jittery playing drums, and then I get up here and speak, and I'm like, you know... So, uh, but, but I had to make a deal with, with Jeremiah, our worship leader this day, because I, I, I threw a curveball at him the last minute. I said, hey, I want you to sing this new song, that last song we did, um, that we, that's a really great song, I think. Um, I said, I want you to do that, but I introduced it to him really late, so the band had to scramble and learn a brand new song in like the last just few days. But I knew that I would have to have some bargaining power, so I said to him, all right, Jeremiah, I'll make you a deal. If you play my song, I'll play drums. And he's like, all right, that's a good deal, so... That's why I'm breaking my personal rule of not drumming. But it was really fun. I needed to beat something today. You ever had that zone of the days where it's like, <laughs> just something, it's really good to beat on something that's not a human, right? Because remember what Dad said last week, our battle isn't against humans, right? <laughs> yeah, some, Jeremiah was joking. He's like, you know, I just wish you could be a Christian and slap people. I'm like, eh, anyways. <laughs> Didn't you say that, Jeremiah? There she's. <laughs> just kidding. Not good theology. Anyway. So when I was a kid, uh, I grew up as a pastor's kid, right? And uh, I grew up around the faith. I mean, I was literally probably two weeks, two weeks, maybe a week after I was born, I was sitting on the front pew of a church. So I always joke that I've been hanging out in the church for 44 plus years. Um, and my dad was a pastor. And I'll never forget, there was this church that my dad was a pastor of. We were in a small town called Kerrville. And there was a guy in that church named Norman. He was a wonderful, wonderful older guy. And he had had a tracheotomy where, like, they'd cut a hole in his throat. And to speak, he had to cover his throat with his finger. He always wore a bandana because he was kind of, you know, ashamed of it. But he always had this really gravelly voice to speak. And I'll never forget one time during worship, the music was going. And, uh, it, you know, I was feeling, like, really connected to God as an 8-year-old. And I, it, don't ever discount the connection your kids can have to God, by the way, if you haven't figured that out. Um, and I was just feeling really connected to God. And I felt, like, sure in my heart that God told me to go and pray for Norman and that God was going to heal him. No way. That's like, and how do I, how does a kid go up and pray for an adult? It feels really awkward as an eight-year-old. But I just knew it, right? And so, man, I got up on my faith, and then the worship set ended. And then I was like, oh, now I can't go. So I didn't pray for him. Cool story, huh? <laughs> so the next week, I feel it again. They're like, I'm supposed to pray for this guy. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm So I finally go over there and I get all this courage up, and I'm like, I got faith, man. I just know it. I knew in my heart God was gonna do this miracle, and he was gonna just use me a little kid to do this miracle. And I went and prayed for him, and nothing happened. And then I prayed for him again the next week, and nothing happened. And he never got healed of that thing. And I remember that was the first moment kind of doubt crept in. I'm like, wait a second. What, do we believe this stuff? Like, I thought, you know, I thought there's a verse that says, if we ask anything in Jesus' name, he'll give it to us. And I started thinking, well, what, what happened? So people would tell me things like, well, you just didn't ask it in Jesus' name. I'm like, so are you telling me? Like, I didn't. And then other people would say, well, you know, Jesus said he couldn't do miracles in certain towns because there just wasn't enough faith. 
And there's some truth to that. There is some truth there. And there's an atmosphere of faith. Things happen. But sometimes we've all had those moments where we prayed and we really believed in faith God was going to do something. You just really knew it. You felt it. You felt the tinglys. You knew in your mind. You just already envisioned what the miracle was going to look like. And it didn't happen. And what I think is amazing is, you know, we're still all here today sitting in church. One of my favorite authors, he's actually my favorite author, G.K. Chesterton, he said this. He said, faith is always at a disadvantage. It is a perpetually defeated thing which survives all conquerors. Have you ever noticed that? Like you've prayed, you prayed and you believed God and he didn't come through for you, but yet you're still here today because you're like, I still have this thing in me that just says there's still some hope somewhere. And I know this about every one of you in here. At some point in your life, maybe today, you've said something like this. I really want to believe God is good, but man, it is so hard. When I prayed for him to heal my mom and she died. It is so hard when I've been begging for him to get me out of this situation and he hasn't seemed to come in and bail me out. I really want to believe God is good, but I'm watching my son just destroy his life. And I'm like going in and I'm intervening and I've done everything I can to help him. And he just keeps trying to like destroy his life. What's going on? I want to believe God is good, but I'm looking at the situation in the world around us. And it seems like things are just getting darker and darker and darker. We all, there's something, this faith within us that God living in it and it says, you know, we want to believe, we want to have faith, but it's like our faith oftentimes gets defeated and we get crushed and we start getting discouraged. But then look at us, we're still here, back here in church, believing there's something there. And that's the tricky thing about faith is, I don't know about you guys, but it's, it's perpetually defeated in my mind, but that it keeps coming back strong. Because I've seen just enough of the goodness of the Lord that I'm like, hey, maybe there's a, there's a chance. Remember that scene from Dumb and Dumber where she says, I would never, ever, ever, ever go out with you. And he looks at her and he says, so you're saying a chance? There's a chance? <laughs> like, that's kind of like, we're like what we're like sometimes. We're like, God, God just like, he totally disappoints us. But yet we're like, but I know there's something there, so I'm back yes. and I'm believing again. And man, it hurts every time I believe and it doesn't happen, but here I am. And I started thinking about this a lot this week as I was preparing this message. And uh, I, I was thought about King David because, man, King David, he fought some hard, hard battles. He had people throwing spears at him, we talked about. He had enemies all around him. And there's this psalm he wrote that's particularly helpful for me when I'm feeling discouraged, when I'm feeling beat up. It's this psalm here. It's a, he wrote it in Psalm 37. He says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 27. You're right. Sorry. Irene's correcting me up here. You're right, it was 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You know, if you're looking for the good, like good news from the media or good news from the CDC or good news from the government to be your light, you're going to be frustrated and perpetually feel like you're walking in darkness because there's always going to be bad news out there. But yet in spite of that, there's this light that shines in the darkness and it's God's light and he's like, his word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And he's showing us the way. Even when everything around us is darkness, you don't have to walk in darkness. You have a light. And it's just, listen, it's just enough light to see what the next step is. But that's enough. That's all you need. You just need enough light to see what the next step is. And you know what? If you could see, if it was sunshine and rainbows and unicorns out there and you could see the path ahead, you wouldn't need faith. Faith is a function of believing when it gets really dark. And you can only see the step in front of you. So gave, King David had a lot of scenarios like that in his life. And he says, the Lord is my light. He's the one that puts the light in front of my feet so I can keep moving forward. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Now, this stronghold, we look at that, oh, that's cool. But, you know, back in the day before we had aircraft and bombers, if you had a big giant tower and people were coming at you with spears, you were pretty safe. You're hanging out in the tower mocking the people below you. You're not going to come and get me. Look at you. You can spit on them, laugh at them, throw water on them, Right? He's saying, God is a stronghold in my life. Like, I have this confidence. I can rise above these problems because God is the one holding me up. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. I had a friend recently tell me, well, what if I don't have any enemies? And I was like, then you're naive or ignoring the truth. <laughs> it's nice to think you don't have enemies, but the reality is there isn't. Well, first of all, there's an enemy of your soul, the devil. But there are a lot of people that do not want the best for you. And you have to recognize that. Not everybody has good intentions. He said, so when my enemies come, those people who don't have good intentions for me, 
my foes, but remember, like my dad said, those aren't the people you're fighting against. You're fighting against the spirit behind it. If it's flesh and blood, it's not your enemy. Who will stumble and fall? Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, though war break out in Ukraine, though war break out in Africa, wherever a war might break out, even then I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be confident God's still working some good in this. One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me upon a rock. And then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At the sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. You know, if you're having, there's times where you just so feel so much pain and agony, you don't even know what to pray. You know, the best thing you can pray is the words of the Lord. It's like, have you ever been in a conversation and you hear somebody saying something that you said originally? And you're like, hey, wait, I said that. And you start paying attention. I think God's kind of like that. He's always listening to you. But when you start busting out his own words on him, he's like, hey, hey, those are good words right there. It says the grass will fade and the flowers will fall, but the words of the Lord will live on forever. When you start quoting scripture, you're quoting the everlasting eternal word of God that's got power. And if you don't know what to pray, man, bust out psalms like this and say, hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says if you seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Don't hide your face from me, Lord. Don't turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. So don't reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a path, in a straight path because of my oppressors. Don't turn me over to the desires of my foes, for what false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. And then he says this. I remain confident of this. In spite of all that's going on around me, in spite of all the wars and rumors of wars, in spite of pandemics, in spite of government crackdowns, in spite of fights, political arguments, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. He's slow oftentimes, but he always comes. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. One of the other renditions of this, um, several other versions, there's a, ver there's a line in this version they left out, and it says this, I would have fainted and lost heart had I not been confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord. And how many times, man, do we, we, we start to lose heart and faint because we just get so overwhelmed by all of the realities around us and things aren't getting better and you're like man I really want to believe God but I'm just so overwhelmed and I don't know how I can trust in your goodness when I, I, I just don't know how this is going to turn out and that's where faith comes in is trusting God's goodness even when you don't know how it's going to turn out C.S. Lewis once said he's like it's not that we're doubting God's plan for good as good for us is good we're doubting how painful the plan is going to be I just wonder, how much pain is he going to let me go through? But you've got to trust on the other side of whatever you're going through that he is working things for your good. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And, you know, the thing about this is, like, faith, it feels foolish. The Apostle Paul, at one point, he said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're pretty pathetic. Meaning, that's my loose transition of it. He says, actually, we're of all people most to be pitied. If, this is, if we're literally turning the other cheek and not fighting back and, um, you know, being honest and truthful in a world of lies and deceit, and we're doing all this, and, and, and there's nothing that we're living for beyond, beyond, heaven, beyond earth, we're pretty dumb. We, pre we might as well just eat, drink, be merry, and rip people off, because if this is all we're living for, what's the point? But we're living for eternity. We're living for something bigger, and that's the hope we have. Apart from that, there's not a whole lot of hope in the world around us. You see a little goodness of humanity, but then you get on the road and you see the not goodness of humanity. And you're like, I want to have faith in humanity. I'm like, well, that's not a good thing to have faith in because humanity has shown over and over again that they don't do good things. They mean, right? So, I was, you know, what's the other option? Like the other, there's hope and people are like, well, your hope is stupid. Why are you having hope? Where it's like, well, what is my other option? Like, what is the other option? Hopelessness? You ever been felt hopeless? Like this is literally a hopeless situation. That's not going to work. There's a lot of people running around today just feeling hopelessness. You see all these suicides that are happening. People have hit despair. It's like it's never going to get better. They're listening to the news all the time and thinking it's never going to get better because the news thrives on producing bad news. It keeps you watching. But it leads, it's the cum cumulative effect leads up 
in your life. And it's not the one article you saw, it's the five articles you saw today, and then the article, and then your friend yelling at another friend on Facebook, and then the news report you heard, and it all adds up, and you start going, it's hopeless. There's no hope, because that's what you start focusing. And then you worry. You start worrying. And listen, I'm right here in this category, and you know, most of the things I worry about never happen, which I've really used to my advantage. So I'll, a lot of times worry about stuff just to make sure it never happens. Bad strategy. Anxiety, that's not a good strategy. Anxiety is not a long-term strategy. It, it wreaks havoc on your body and your health. And cynicism, that's where a lot of people are right now. Nobody trusts anybody. Well, look at the data. Well, I don't, I don't believe your data. Your, your, your people are corrupted. Now, my people, I trust. Look at our data. Well, your data, your people are corrupted. And everybody's like, well, you're, you know, and we get cynical of, of everything. And it's really hard to guard our heart and not be so cynical of everything. We're just like, we don't trust, we don't trust government leaders anymore. We don't, sometimes we don't even trust pastors because we're like, well, look at that pastor over there who screwed up. And it's so easy to get cynical, but you've got to keep your heart pure and tender towards the Lord because cynicism is not a long-term strategy. It doesn't go well. Hope is your only long-term strategy. And one of the challenges when we're in the throes of the battle is keeping our perspective lifted. You've got to keep your perspective lifted. And there's this experiment that was done a few years ago. And I want to show you the experiment. I want you all to participate in it. Watch the screens real quick and, and follow the instructions here. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. Y'all get it? How um, many passes how did many you was count? It? The correct answer is 15 passes. Oh, sorry, guys. But, but did you see the gorilla? <laughs> this video is from research. By so uh, be honest, who didn't see the gorilla? I didn't. First time. You know, that's a great picture of what happens sometimes in our lives. We get so focused on the little things and we're counting up all the things that are wrong. And meantime, a gorilla comes into the room and sometimes that gorilla is God's grace just, but you know, we miss it because we're so focused on the little tiny petty things that we're counting. Well, if this would just be right and this would be right and that would be right, everything would be okay. There's this concept in psychology we call selective abstraction. It's a type of cognitive or mental bias in which a detail is taken out of context and believed while everything else in the context is ignored. I've told the story about when I was first getting started speaking, I went and spoke at a college, uh, a college chapel. There's a Christian college. There were you know, thousands thousand students there. And right when I started speaking, I felt really confident getting up there. I'm like, man, these kids are going to love me. And kid in the front row, as soon as I started speaking, put his hoodie over him, put on headphones, and checked out and started listening to music. And I was like, Two minutes later, two, a girl two rows behind him did the exact same thing and started reading a book with headphones on. I was so frazzled. The whole rest of the message, I was like, oh, I'm trying to get their attention, you know, focus on them. And afterwards, I was like, I'm done. This speaking thing is not going to work out for me. I stink at this. This is just not good. Well, the chaplain ran up to me. He's like, dude, I have never seen these students that engaged. And I was like, yeah, but those two kids on the front were just checked out. He's like, yeah, they're goobers. They always do that. But he's like, did you see the other thousand? He's like, uh, no. I was too focused on the idiots in the front row. <laughs> and how many times has that happened to us? We get focused on one little tiny thing that's out of line, and we miss the thousand other people that are smiling at us. One person cuts you off, and the whole world's out to get you. And you forget about all the great people out there. One situation happens, it's just not quite what you want, but you forget about God's grace, this gorilla of his grace that's in the room because you're counting all the tiny little things. And it's easy to selectively, a selective abstraction to pick out one thing and be like, if I could just get this fixed, everything would be okay. 
And in the meantime, there's all this goodness of God all around you. And it even gets worse. Check out this. Check out this experiment. The monkey business illusion. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. The correct answer is 16 Did you get passes. It this time? Did you see the other thing too? Did you spot the gorilla? <laughs> For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half missed the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it. But did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? <laughs> Let's rewind and watch it again. Here comes the gorilla, and there goes a player, and the curtain is changing from red to gold. Isn't that crazy? You thought you knew what to look for, and still other stuff. Here's the, here's the reality, guys. If you are seeking something, you will find it. And we always use that, well, if you seek the truth, you'll find it. But you know what? You'll seek anything. You'll find anything you seek, you'll find. If you're looking for bad news, you will find bad news. If you're looking for something to back up your fear and prove that there's reason to be afraid, you'll find it. It's just a principle. What you tend to focus on and seek, you'll find it. You will find it. And the wild thing is, if you're seeking, and you're seeking the wrong things, you may miss an entire background in your life changing. God's slowly turning the tide in your favor changing things you've been praying for but you gave up on. And in the meantime, he's like, now I'm going to do this because you stopped trying to control everything. Now watch me. And he starts changing the whole background. And he moves people out of your life. And you're like, oh, yeah, they were in their life, my life making me miserable. But they're gone now because you learned to just deal with it, right? And the background changes. And, man, that is this, that, that's what I've just seen. You know, over the last few years, we've been so focused on everything that's going wrong. But in the meanwhile, God hasn't stopped working. He has been working behind the scenes. He has been changing the background of everything that's happening in our world. He's been like literally changing everything. And there's going to be some really good we've seen of that. And I know a lot of us, man, we have lost just way too many people this year. Um, I've been to more funerals in the last two years than I think I have in my whole life. And a lot of you, man, you're looking at it, you go, man, I just I want to believe God's good, but I'm losing. Family members are dropping like flies, and I'm worried for my health and and, and it's so easy to stay focused on counting, you know, how many people you've lost this year or counting, you know, the, how long is this pandemic going to go on? And in the meanwhile, God's working his goodness in the middle of all of it. And, and he's changing backgrounds and he's changing. He's raising up leaders and he's taking others out of the picture. He's working his will in the host of heaven and accomplishing his purposes. And we got to just stay focused on the right stuff. So here's I want to leave you with two encouragements. OK, two encouragements. One. Focus on the big picture. Don't lose sight of the background of what God's doing because you're focused on those tiny little things that aren't just right in your life. Man, oh, he, just, just, he won't change. She won't change. Things aren't getting better. The finances aren't improving. It's not happening. Stay focused on the bigger picture. And then the second thing is this. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You know, sometimes you've got to be your own cheerleader. You're waiting around for people to go, yay, yay, yay. And, um, sometimes you got to be on cheerleader. There's a story where King David it says, David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because all the people were bitter in soul. Now, that, that's a real problem when all of your friends are wanting to stone you. Not generally a good thing, right? That would be a significant thing. Each for his sons and daughters. Uh, the people were bitter in his soul, each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. He said, you know what? I can't count on anybody around me to lift up my spirits. But you know what? You're, you're not cheering yourself on for your ability. You're cheering on the reality that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. And if you're trying to, 
If you're counting on your own ability to be your hope, you're going to be sorely disappointed. If you're counting on your own ability for your own optimism to be your hope, you're going to be sorely disappointed. If you're counting on your pessimism, or I like to call it realism, to keep you afloat, you're going to be sorely disappointed. But sometimes you just have to say, you know what, I'm not going to depend on anything around me. And sometimes, honestly, sometimes you got to sing your way into the truth. You just got to turn up the music, get in your car, turn it up as loud as you can, and sing. And, and there's another thing, man. The stuff you're putting in your head makes a difference. So if you're listening to really discouraging music all day long about how the man is out to oppress you and get you and how everybody, you know, your, your pickup truck broke and basically all country music. But uh, <laughs> if that's all you're filling your head with, you're going to be discouraged. But if you're filling your head with life-giving worship songs, sometimes you got to sing your way into the truth and you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Listen, guys, I don't know if things are going to get better anytime soon, but it doesn't matter if they do around you. Because the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And God is taking us somewhere good. And he has not abandoned you. He has not forgotten you. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He's going to get you where he wants you to be. So you stay focused on the light that he gives to you right in front of your feet. No matter what's going on around you in your marriage, in your finances, in your job, in the world, in the government. Stay focused on him because I guarantee you this. You will eventually see the goodness of the Lord. So don't you forget it. So since we've got a little bit of time, I ended early. I thought, why don't we sing that song one more time? We will see the goodness of the Lord and sing it as loud as you can to pump yourself up to face this week. But don't just stop there. Keep singing it throughout the week. Let me pray for you guys. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness. We believe we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I pray for anyone that's feeling hopeless. They're wanting to give up. They're wanting to throw in the towel. They're wanting to call it quits. Lord, I pray that you would just infuse them with a sense of confidence this morning. A faith rises up in them and says, you know what? This ain't over. We're going to keep pushing forward. I believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. And I don't see how it's going to happen, but I don't have to see how it's going to happen. All I have to see is the next step. Amen. Let's sing that. Y'all can stand. As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. And no matter where I go, no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. Bow before you. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. 
or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.